Right, video two for Tuesday, and it is Tuesday. Video earlier today, I may have called it Monday. It shows where my head's at. But my day got a little bit better because we got the opportunity to speak to David Turnbull. You know the script by now, Celtic fan media, there are lots of them. We're part of it. We were there. I got to ask David Turnbull a question. You'll get to hear the question, what he had to say, and all the other stuff that went on during the fan media conference. And you'll even get to hear the questions that were asked today as opposed to what happened late last week. So it's quite a quick press conference. It started about three o'clock. It was over by quarter past three, but it's still great to hear from David Turnbull. Have a wee listen to what went down during the press conference and then afterwards we may have a little surprise for you. Not a big one, just a wee one. Hi David, uh, Hamish from 67 Hill Hill. Um, you know, the Celtic fans have found out a lot about um, the manager and, uh, you know, the hard work he's put in in the training ground. But I wonder if you'd give us an insight into what he's like as a person. Have you had a one-on-one -on -one conversation with him yet? Um, I've not. Well, when I first arrived, I had a kind of small conversation with him, but he's a very good guy in the training pitch and off the pitch, he's very ha happy and friendly and he's been good to work with just implementing his own ideas and kind of getting everybody to work to 100% every day. It's, it's been great so far. So we saw a glimpse of training with Ange when he was mic'd up a couple of weeks ago. Can you give us any further in insight into what he's like as a coach, what he's like on the training pitch and what key differences he's implemented since taking charge compared with last season? Yeah, he's been brilliant since I've come and joined up with the boys. Training every day has been brilliant. Um, He's tried to implement his own game game plan and how we work as a team on the pitch and kind of just gives you wee tips here and there and in the team meetings kind of tells us before the games what he'd like us to do and it's it's, an, it's a good style of football and hopefully it'll continue and hopefully everything works out. Yeah, Natasha said there about, the, about preparation as a new manager, um, but with the Champions League coming up now, it's very early days for us to be in the competition. Well, how are the preparations going and the fitness levels? Yeah, they're going well. Uh, it's been a great camp this past kind of week to ten days. Um, we have a few games in between and obviously a game to finish um, tomorrow. So I think that will stand us in good stead getting into uh, the cha first Champions League qualifier and a lot of the boys are kind of looking fit and, and ready for it. And do you think there's a... Has he got a fair idea of who is going to be his starting eleven? Um, that's probably down to him to choose. Um, I don't know what he's thinking, but whatever he chooses, I'm sure we'll go out there and um, give it our best. Uh, obviously, last season was quite disappointing, but you were one of the highlights of it. Um, getting into this season, what is your hopes and plans to develop even further as part of the team? Um, this season, it's just... Try to go one further than last year. Um, obviously, as you said, it was great on a personal level last year, but um, it's just about kind of kicking on for that now personally and then bringing more to the team and just gelling as a team together and kind of getting results every week. And we have to grind them out. If we're not playing our best, we need to do that. But um, that's probably the aim, just going into the season full of confidence and play our way through it. Um, I wonder if um, get your thoughts on um, the, the the situation with a professional footballer missing a penalty kick um, and being subjected to horrible racist abuse on social media by his own supporters. Um, yeah, obviously it's not fair on anybody. Um, it's a kind of game of football at the end of the day. Everybody gets these opportunities and sometimes, sometimes they go in, sometimes they don't. And I don't think any of that Racism and abuse towards any of the players should be should be right in kind of this day and age. Suppose as fans we're watching these friendlies, we're looking for uh, cohesion. We're looking to see, you know, what we can see from the outside. In terms of you as a player, but in the inside, there's a lot of things being squeezed into the number of weeks that Ange and yourselves have had to prepare. Have these friendlies uh, led to you being able to get to know each other and sort of coalesce a lot better? I mean, as a group, as a group of players, and and is that something Ange is very much on top of? Yeah, the full camp and the friendlies. It's about bedding in your players. A few of the new boys have come in. They've looked, looked very good, and 
Um, it's just try to get everybody gelling together through the games and I feel like he's kind of brought that as well. He wants everybody to kind of talk on the pitch and uh, just show for the ball, whatever, and off the pitch. Just It's been great, really. Everybody's been getting to know each other and kind of spending time together. Yeah, one of the things we've noticed, I think, a lot of us have noticed is that he's working on this don't stop attitude that he has, which I think is exciting us. So it's great to see, man. And then for a player like you, I think that's right up your street. <laughs> yeah, it's for what he's been saying. I've liked what I've been hearing. Um, obviously, for attacking players, it's good to hear. Just going to try to express yourself. And if you give the ball away or you make mistakes, uh, it's about how you react and win the ball back. Hi, David Martin from 20 Minute Tim's here. After you had a good season last season and coming into Ange and his new philosophy, how do you think you fit into that and what improvements do you feel you need to make to your game to improve to get in his team all the time? Um, yeah, I, I think I fit into it. I'm an attacking player and I like to try go forward with the ball and create plenty of chances. And For the team, it's just, I think, for myself, he's, liking, he's wanting boys to show their reaction if somebody gives the ball away and just about kind of getting back into position quicker and just kind of wee things like that I think I'd, I need to improve on a wee bit um, but I'm sure that'll come. Hi David, uh, Paddy here from uh, the Celtic Exchange podcast. Thanks for taking the time for today. Um, just first of all, just obviously looking back in last season, we obviously seen how hard it was with what, obviously a lot of the COVID practices in place. Um, are you starting to see that this season, uh, obviously the pre-season, boys that, players that joined last year do you feel that they're now getting the benefit of a full pre-season and, and even yourself included? Are you starting to see, obviously, the fruits of that labour? Is that the club starting to kind of gel for the season ahead so far? Yeah, last year for everybody was tough. Um, I've also came to Celtic and Covid's that's been a thing ever since and it's been a hard thing to deal with. But as you can see, they're kind of ho hopefully lifting the restrictions and stuff and it's just about... I'm really looking forward to playing in front of some fans if, when they get in or if they get in. Um, I've not done that yet and I'm, I can't wait for it. And as you can, you can see, everybody's kind of more high in spirits, I'd say, kind of get into this season. Um, for years, we've been used to watching Scott Brown at the front of all the run-ins um, and the warm-ups and in training, setting, setting the bar in terms of uh, standards in training. What I want to know is who's taking up that mantle now in pre-season in terms of really setting the standard uh, in training? Yeah, there's a few boys kind of always at the front and stuff and making sure they get the best out of players. There's senior players who have been here for a while as well, but kind of at the front of it all the time is Callum McGregor. He's the one who's kind of probably naturally fit. He's coming for what he's achieved and what he's done in the game. Um, he's um, kind of took up that role at the time being. That was David Turnbull speaking to assembled Celtic fan media earlier today. Now, we thought we would bring in Ewan from 67 Hay Wheel to just have a wee natter about what was said during that press conference. And I do mean a wee natter because we've both got stuff to get on with. Ewan, what, what did you make of that? Did you think there was anything particular that, that stood out from, from what David Turnbull said? Uh, a couple of wee things, yeah. Um, I mean, first of all, would be the sort of leadership issue. Um, you know, the way he talks about Colin McGregor with such kind of, I don't want to say reverence, it sounds a bit far, but like there's the respect he obviously has from uh, uh, kind of taking up the Scott Byrne role uh, at training in the dressing room. So that was good. Um, and yeah, I just thought it was kind of weird that like, uh, yeah, he was player of the year, but he didn't actually play in front of any fans last last season. That was something he reflected on. Um, he's not obviously the most outrageous guy. He's not, you know, um, he, he's quite straightforward, and I mean that in the best way. Uh, but yeah, it was, it's good, and it, it's good that this is sort of becoming a norm where you know fan media gets to speak to players, and you know can't complain about that at all. So no, all good. Yeah, no, it was definitely as I said earlier. It was a really short press conference. It probably only lasted about a quarter of an hour, but there were certain wee nuggets in there, um, you know, to take from. He said the players are looking fit and ready. Now, obviously, you wouldn't expect David Turnbull to see anything but that, but that's still, you know, something to note. He said that Ange Postecoglou is happy and friendly. That's a direct quote off the pitch, and that he's fun to work with. So again, that's not something you would necessarily 
Um, you know, not expect to hear the a player say of his manager, but it does seem like there's quite a decent, happy environment at the club at the moment. Um, a bit I wanted to pick up on, he said, uh, and again, this isn't you know anything new, but he said Postacoglu really wants the players to show their reaction if and when they lose the ball. And Turnbull actually said that's something he feels he has to improve on. Do you think David Turnbull will have any issues adapting to that? Has he, has he got the, the engine needed to play in an Ange Postacoglu team? I would think so, yeah. Uh, I think this preseason is going to be really good for him in that regard because, I mean, he's not. You, you could sort of predict with quite, you know, uh, with reliability that Tom Rogic, for example, would come up, could, would come off after 60, 70 minutes. And it was a similar kind of theme last season in a sense. Uh, David Turnbull wouldn't wouldn't often, you know, finish matches, but um, whether or not he's needed to finish matches, as long as he can keep up a decent level of intensity for a good hour, 70 minutes, and we've got really good production out of him. Um, but yeah, I think he'll adapt just because he has that determination to. Um, and you know, obviously, a year working with the fitness coaches at Celtic, and um, that you know, no, no disrespect to Motherwell, but obviously, the facilities, the level of, of training that he gets at Celtic is going to be a higher standard. So um, yeah, you just thought you'd be able to adapt to it. I think he could be really key under Ange Postecoglou, to be honest. A good summer for him. Went away to the Euros with Scotland. Mm-hmm. But there must be a bit of frustration in there that he wasn't able to to get on the pitch for for any match and. The Euros, I think I'm right in saying that, and uh, that, that must be a bit of motivation for him going into this season, surely, that he, that he, if he plays for Celtic, plays well for Celtic, first and foremost, he can edge his way into the international setup as well. He was definitely our best player last season. I was even trying to think of anyone else who came close, probably someone like Christopher Iyer, you would maybe say, was, was a decent player and played the full season, but in terms of impact he had, David Turnbull was, was excellent last season. You just hope that you hope that he's able to do it in a good team as well. And I know that might sound a daft thing to say because you would assume yeah. automatically if you're playing well in a bad team, you could do it in a good team. But we've had a lot of players in the past. James Forrest used to be, I'm talking eight, nine years ago, used to be a great player when Celtic were struggling. But when Celtic were playing well, he didn't necessarily play as well. So I'm really hoping that David Turnbull can still be our main man, hopefully in a winning Celtic team this season. No, definitely. And I think it's more noticeable maybe when players kind of come out uh, and they're more effective when we're not doing as well because those those impacts obviously are, you know, they're more kind of illuminated than, you know, when, for example, when El Unici scored the third in a 4 0 win kind of thing. It's a different uh, scenario. But um, yeah, no, I think yeah, he's, he's a quality player. Uh, and, and in regards to Euro 2020, um, I think, you know, because it was a larger squad. I think Steve Clark will take in some folk in just for just I mean it's not just for the patter, but just for like uh just for the um experience, experience learning experience, yeah, yeah of being being in a camp like that and the standards that you need to be, you know, an international footballer. Um I think that'll put him in really good stead, to be honest. And and it's just it's disappointing that he didn't come on for any of it, but you know, I mean if it was me obviously being incredibly biased, I would have picked him for every game, but you know, given the quality that we have in midfield and the kind of situations that we're developing, I don't know if he could have turned around the game ever in against Croatia, for example. Um, I mean, I think he would have been decent in the first game against um, against the Czech Republic. I think that would have been a, a really good game for him. But, you know, Steve Clark's manager, not me. So, uh, But he will be. I mean, he's going to be uh, a bona fide, you know, uh, Scotland international in time. So it's just a case of waiting. He's still, he's still really young. So Yeah, you really hope that that summer has... You know, put them in good stead. The the experience of playing at a major tournament with all the pressure that entails, and that doesn't just go for him; it goes for the other four Scottish players as well. You, you really hope that they're coming back to to Celtic, and they're not necessarily going to be phased by a Champions League qualifier when forty million pounds in the line, because you know they've been part of their country playing at a major tournament. It doesn't really get any bigger than that. So hopefully yeah. Celtic can really, you know, get the rewards from that as well. Um, but no, great to hear from David Turnbull today. I think a bit like Postacoglu, he's a guy who prefers being on the pitch, playing football than in the press environment. And again, that isn't a slight against him. I would much rather have players who do their talking on the pitch. And David Turnbull certainly did that last season. I'm looking forward to, to seeing him again this season.